Hello there and welcome to this tutorial. My name is Nello Johnson. I'm a photographer and retoucher, retoucher and photographer instructor, one of the co-founders at the Glamour Retouching Studios where we teach high-end retouching and professional photography. So it's been a while since I've done one of these YouTube videos because I've had several of my YouTube videos close. As many of you may have recognized me or know me from doing a lot of um, nude photography and retouching and stuff like that. So over time, YouTube policies have gotten a little bit stricter. And so therefore, um, my channels were hit because I've done a lot of nude retouching um, on all my YouTube channels. So it took me a while, a couple of months, I just decided to take a break from doing tutorials because I've put so many years into those different channels and to see them get closed down a couple of months apart, it, it really just, you know, turned me off. But I'm back at it. I have a lot of tutorials um, in the works because, as you know, I also um, um, am the owner of the Glamour Professional Retouch Panel. So this specific channel is going to be based on reviewing Photoshop plugins and stuff like that. And today we're going to take a look at a Photoshop plugin, which I think is really underestimated. Sometimes I see the ads on Facebook and stuff like that, and I see some people trying to make fun of it, but I can promise you some of your best photographers are out there. I'm not going to name them, but I'm talking world-class photographers use this plugin and for this plugin for today we're going to be using portraiture i'm using the newest version of portraiture portraiture 4 and i'm going to show you why i feel this plugin should be in just about every retoucher uh, uh basket it's really one of those for me top five plugins to must have so let's just jump straight into this video and um, I'm going to start up the portraiture. I'm, not, I'm going to show this on several different photos. So what is the big deal about portraiture? Portraiture basically is a skin softening um, plugin. So if you have problems softening skin and you would like to, you know, soften the skin and stuff like that, this is where portraiture uh, comes in. So let's just go to the, the panels themselves so you can see them all line off here. So we have several different, uh, portraiture has several different stuff. And I'm gonna go through all these sliders so you have an understanding of how portraiture works. So let's put all these back down Sorry, let's put all these back to default so you can see how all of, how all of this uh, works. And with Portraiture 4, it works really quickly, I have to say. Um, so this one goes, it, it, yeah, it works very, very quickly. I use Portraiture 2, 3, and 4, and this one is, is very quick. So let me give you some good setting recommendations for Portraiture. Now, I don't really like to use the mask. Some people use the mask um, to help, you know, um, even out the um, skin tones and stuff like that. But it's a hit and miss. Sometimes it works well. But for me, I like to use it without the mask. So I have the mask turned off. And now we're going to just go through this so you can have an idea of what's happening. So we have here the fine and this one I like to leave around minus 19, minus 18. So I'm just going to go minus 18 and then we have the medium. And this is basically starting to work on the skin itself. Now, to give you a better understanding, I'm going to raise the smooth up to 100%. And also we can have the portrait, the, the, the portrait size meaning what size of the photo is going to be covered. I like to leave it just as auto, just as it is, like so. So let's bring the smoothing up. And now we have the original file here on the right, uh, sorry, on the left. 
if you're sitting down watching and the edit one here on the right. Now I'm going to bring the medium up and watch what's happening to the skin. As you can see, it's starting to just slowly smoothen up the skin. I'm going to also bring the large all the way up. As you can see, the skin is starting to get a bit more uh, smoother. And now I'm going to bring the threshold all the way up. And as you can see now, it's you can see a really big difference between the image on the left and the image on the right. And this is a new feature that they added. I'm still doing some research on this. And by the way, they're not paying me to make these tutorials. And they have no idea I'm actually making this tutorial. So I'm just doing it myself. So the Unimi, and we're going to raise that up. And that helps to soften up the image even more. So I have everything in terms of the smoothness, degradation, how smooth you want the image. Um, I have everything up to the max. So you can see. Now my recommend settings for this may vary. Now when it comes to these beauty uh, portrait stuff. So what I like to do is scale back the medium by 17. So I'm scaling back everyone almost by one. The large, I mean, sorry, one apart. The large, I will do that 18. The threshold, I will do that uh, around 39. And the, the uniformity, I will leave that as 40. And the smoothening is where you can adjust how much smoothening you want. Now, because we will be doing dodge and burn to this photo to, to um, finish, help get it even better. I like to keep my smoothening around 20 to no more than 50. In this case, we have done no retouching to the skin. So let's just try 40, 41. Okay, that looks fine. So we can go just a little bit more just for the sake of it. And these are my recommend settings right here. Now, let me show you something with the fine, why I have the fine so low. The fine gets things really muddy if you was to use the fine too aggressively. So let's go with aggressive fine. And as you can see, the image is just getting way too soft. Now, that might be a cup of tea. Do not pay no attention to the internet about over retouching. And if your client wants you to retouch a certain way, if you want that really aggressive airbrush look, then just push the fine up a little bit heavier. But for me, I still want a lot of details. And so I keep the fine around 18, minus 18 to minus 19. I keep it around there. And what the fine is basically doing is, let's go in a little bit closer. So the small little details here, the fine is really softening them out, which makes a more aggressive airbrush look, which is why I say I usually just go for around minus 18 to minus 19, and that's, that's fine. And now we have the nice smoothing of the skin. Now we can go back down here to where it says details. And here we have several different stuff. First of all, the masking, I don't bother with, I just leave that as it is. Here we have sharpening. So if we bring that up, it will sharpen the image. So off, on. So it just adds a little bit of sharpening to the image. Now, I like to keep this between plus five and no more than, than 20. And in this case, because of YouTube compression, we're gonna keep it a bit high so you can see how it looks. Then we also have another layer of softening. So let's bring the sharpening down. Let's say we bring this all the way up. So this is going to get the skin even more softening and if you was to raise the fine, then you would really, if, if this is your cup of tea, then again, 
you're more than welcome to go for that style uh, and so on you know let's try the auto and as i say i don't feel a difference because the, what the auto is supposed to do is select areas in which um you can add the selection to but i also when i'm done with this i like to import this as a new file so stuff like the eyes if i need to mask them out um i can mask them out but generally speaking the way how i go about it it's never that soft so the softening we can bring that back down there and the softening i usually don't go for no more than five and again we're going to go for something aggressive so you can see on the sharpening we're going to go for 10 uh, around 10. now we have some other little stuff here because once we do this the colors start to change a little bit it might get a little bit more on the cooler side so i try to keep my images i want to keep them looking you know the same way how they were kind of captured and for uh, color grading you know and, and stuff like that tweaking the colors i like to do that myself either in photoshop or with other plugins in photoshop so to conquer that we have the contrast so we can go minus and it gets brighter but i like to go up plus because already it's getting a little bit brighter so plus one and the plus is very aggressive so let's go to plus 20 so you can see the plus is very aggressive so let's just zoom out so you can see it can be very aggressive if you're trying to go for something really dark and, and um, artistic and stuff like that the plus can be very aggressive um, i never use a minus i never found myself in a situation where i need to use a minus um, so for me i like to go either plus one or plus two or again if i'm going for something artistic um, um i can do that but usually speaking if i'm going for something artistic my lighting style is going to already uh capture something already dark and moody so again i would only need to go up plus one or plus two but again for the sake of youtube we will go a little bit aggressive so let's go plus three so you can see and then we have the brightness if you want to make it brighter and darker and stuff like that usually i go up plus one on the brightness so you can make it darker or brighter and then we have the 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 tilt i usually don't mess with this but i like to mesh with the the warmness so we can go down and we can go up and generally speaking i like i like to go up between one and three just trying to almost match uh, the image on the left in terms of how warm it was and now we can just want to make sure a new layer is checked and boom so here's the before and here's after and the reason why we make a new layer is let's say if you want to mask out stuff you can just add a white mask there and then you can come with a a black brush and you can just mask out areas if you're going for something too aggressively generally speaking um, i never really have the mask because i try not to go for anything too soft and stuff like that as i said i would not in my personal use make it this soft but i'm just giving you an idea of how you can go about it now here's the great thing about this if you're still watching this video and thank and thankfully you are so thank you very much so everything we just done let's say now we're happy with that all your settings is saved so if we go back here to if we go back here to filter and we go back here to portrait of four i can just run this i can even make a keyboard um, shortcut out of this and i can just have it run but just know that any other time that you change your settings and you try to just automatically run it um, um, um that new settings that you add is going to be um applied so let's go to a different image here so you can see let's go to something like this and we're going to go here we're going to run it again let's 
So let's zoom in. So you can see before and after, before and after. So let me show you a real world case scenario, how this would work. Let's check out the different images we have, how this would work. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to be using several different Photoshop actions and we're going to have this image edit in about 15 to 20 seconds. So pay attention. This is my keyboard shortcut, but also incorporates the portrait of four. And so my keyboard shortcut for that was shift F4 and just let this run and do its thing. Then we have here, okay. And this is running several different stuff. We touch for me, um, um, spot healing. Oops, and we have a problem here. So this is an error I've been having with Photoshop lately. Um, Photoshop has been giving me some little problems and most likely there's coming an update. Um, there's something I probably need to update with my Photoshop. But generally speaking, all my actions that I put together would have this image edit um, very quickly. And maybe I should have checked my Photoshop before this because I've noticed this problem um, before, but I have not really been editing the photos for the past week. So which is why I didn't um, go through that. So there you go, portraiture. So let's just run it again so you can see portraiture four. Let it do its thing. And there we go. I highly recommend if you a, uh, a retoucher and you know you have problems with softening the skin and all that kind of stuff. So let's just check something here. I highly recommend checking out Portrait of Four. It is a really great tool, and I definitely put this in my top five of Photoshop plugins. Now, when it comes to Photoshop softening, I or softening the skin, smoothing the skin, airbrushing, or whatever, I definitely put this in the top three. So, definitely a top five plugin, and a plugin I use on at least. 25 to 30 percent of my photos because i don't have one technique of editing my editing will all depends on my client's need the budget what it's going to be used for and that kind of stuff so i have different ways of editing but definitely when my clients are a little bit more on the budget and i need to get work done out a bit bit more quicker and stuff like that then i rely on portraiture which allows me not to spend as much time uh, less time editing so i can get the photos bind out instead of charging my clients less and wasting extra time editing. So definitely portraiture is a must have if you, especially if you are a beginner or intermediate and stuff like that, it's definitely a, a, a serious plugin. Even if you are pro, I think you will really appreciate portraiture and stuff like that and understand that there are some projects where clients, they want relatively good work. They don't care about the most you know, being the absolute best, but at the same time, they want you to cut them a break in terms of price. And you need to find a way of how you can bang out the work, not spend that extra time, even though you charge them less money. And I feel portraiture is definitely going to help. So if you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And if you would like to check out other videos, don't forget to subscribe and go and check us out at the Glamour Retouching Studios. So until then, bye and see you around. Take care.